Hi, I'm Rob Cosm. Welcome to my shop. In this video today, we're going to be hand planing wood, thicknessing a board. Now this is the final step in processing a piece of lumber entirely with hand tools. I'm going to show you all the tips and tricks that I've learned over the years and hopefully it'll help you. Stay tuned. I'm Rob Cosman and welcome to my shop. Rob here from Rob Cosman Woodworking where we make it our job to help take your woodworking to the next level. If you're new to our channel be sure to subscribe also hit the notification bell so you will know when we release another video. Any of the tools, or things that we use will always be in the, in the description down below to help you get as much out of this as possible. Let's get to work. We have taken this piece of store-bought lumber and we have made it flat and verified it on this face. We squared and straightened this edge to that face. We made this opposite edge parallel to that one so that it is also square to the reference face and nice and straight. We squared off the end of this board, made it square to the face and to the edge, and we cut it to length and then squared it up. So five of the six sides are perfect. Now, if you haven't seen those, you can check in the link below and get caught up, to us, got caught up with us to this point. What we're going to do now is go in and referencing and I'll emphasize this again. This is our reference face. Everything gets measured or marked based or referenced off of this. So I don't have to do anything other than scribe a line that reference, pardon me, that remains parallel to that face. And then no matter what this side looks like, as long as we plane down to the line, everything is going to come out perfect. A lot of the things I'm going to show you are techniques that I've had to adapt to my failing eyesight, not failing any worse than anybody else when you're getting close to 60, but I never used to have to go in and do a lot of this stuff. However, time marches on. First thing I'm going to do is take my marking gauge and set it for the thickness of the finished piece. Now this board that we're dealing with is measuring just shy of 7 eighths. So again, you would take this off of your project, but I'm going to set this for 3 quarter. So I'm using my marking gauge and, I'll, and my steel rule, I'll get that right on the three-quarter mark, which is quite easy to see. And the gauge that I'm using has a cutter designed for hardwoods. But the one thing you want to make sure is the cutters are good and sharp. You want a nice, accurate line. So I'm going to take a piece of blue painter's tape and I'm going to stay, I'm, I'm going to stay away from this inside edge, or the reference face, sorry so that my marking gauge is not influenced. I'm going to go all the way around this board. Again, I'm staying just far enough away from the reference face that I won't end up touching it with my marking gauge. Now, I've got that piece in the way. Okay, referencing off of my reference face, uh, focus on keeping the face of the cutter tight to that surface. Now the way the shape of the cutter, the flat side is out, the bevel's on the end, so it's going to be pulling it this way all the time, so you really don't have to worry about it wandering away. You want that cutter, it's designed to be fixed, it should not roll as you're doing this. And remember, the one thing about red oak, the grain is very coarse and it's going to be extremely difficult under the best circumstances to see this line. You could put this in a vise if you needed to. If it was any longer I probably would. But I can manage this way. And then the final end. If you need to at the end, rather than risk going off crazy, you can just, just stop and then roll that last little bit. Gives you lots of control. Now we'll find the start part and just peel that off and that nice sharp cutter leaves us with a really distinct line that we'll plane to. We get close by the way, we'll peel all the tape off, but for right now 
to save having to put my headgear on every time I stop to check. I can quite readily look at that and tell where I am in relation to the line. All right, I'll get my plane out. We'll get this dog down and we'll go at it. Okay, before we dog this down, we want to make sure we're planting in the right direction. Now, this is a piece of red oak, as I've mentioned several times. It's really coarse. So if you can't tell by looking at the side, and I've got the tape on there, you can tell by running your hand over it. And when I run this way, I can feel my skin catching in little pores. But when I go that way, I don't feel any of it. So I know I want to plane in that direction. Now, the bench is important. We want it nice and clean. We don't want anything in there that's going to hold one part of the board up, nor do, and we also want this to be flat. And if you don't have a good bench, I'll leave a link at the end of this video on one that we've recently developed that's easy to build, and it'll uh, provide you with the surface you need for working hand tools. So I'm going to put this in place. Now, I don't think it's quite long enough. In fact, I know it isn't, so I'm just going to put a block of wood in here. And that's sitting below, so I don't have to worry. <laughs> Of course, that's too short too. I'll put a piece up in here as well. Now I'm just gonna tap that down. I want that to be laying nice and flat on the bench. I'm gonna use my five and a half, and it's it's long enough for this piece. You could use you could use a jointer or a four plane. I wouldn't use a smoother for doing this. I want to wax that sole. This reduces the friction. I need my blade to be, this is really critical, that that blade be parallel to the sole. If not, every time you take a pass, you're taking more off one side than the other. So as I sight down there, I'll use my lateral adjustment lever to get it so that it appears to be parallel at least. Then I'm going to retract the blade. Now, I'm going to start planing and I'll walk you through the process of determining whether or not the blade is parallel. But what I want to tell you now is the first thing we want to accomplish is we want to get this surface parallel to that tape. If once we do that, we can then take down equal amounts with every three passes so that we just simply get down to the line and we're done. But my point is we don't want to run out of material before we get this surface parallel. So I'm gonna, I want to get it smoothed off first. So I'm going to start here. Now, this is a little bit different than doing edge work. And the, the biggest difference is, you notice I'm skewing my plane. This is very similar to what we did when we did the original face. So uh, if you need some to catch up on some points, you can always go back and check that video. But I'm skewing it with the blade hanging over my, on the right side, uh, left side just a little bit. And as I start to advance the blade to pick up a shaving, it appears to be pretty good. So I'm going to bring it out a little farther. First pass went right here. Second pass down the middle. Third pass on the opposite side. Back to the left. Down the middle. Right side. Do it again. And I'll keep doing that until I get full width passes all the way. All right, that's pretty clean. Now, I'm gonna take a quick look. I sometimes prefer to take it out of the vise. So what I'm looking for here is to determine whether or not that surface is parallel to the line. And if you look here, I've got about a 16th, but if you look over here, I've got probably 3.30 seconds. So this side, I'm gonna mark this as being low. Now look over on this side. Same thing, this is low. Now I'll look on the end. So the good news on the end is it seems that it's parallel across the end, which means I don't have a bump or a hump in the board. So the, whole, the, taper, is a, the taper appears to be just going off like that, but it's on one plane. No pun intended. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm going to uh, 
revise what I just said. I actually think it's a little bit thicker over here. So this one is the thinnest of the bunch. I mean, I'm going to stay away from that corner. And if I look over here, same thing. I'm thicker here. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to try to get, I'm going to try to get the surface parallel to the two ends. Because right now, not only am I tipped in this direction, but I'm also tipped in this direction. So let's deal with one at a time. If you want, and some people will use a uh, piece of chalk, but I prefer these dry erase markers. They're easy to see, but they don't go very deep. I'm going to run some lines across this board. So this is the side that has to come down. So I'm going to take a pass, take another one, take another one. Step over to the middle, back over to the far left, step over to the middle, back over to the far left, middle, and a little bit closer to that right side, middle, over to the far left. Okay, let's take a look at that. What do you think? go a little too far. Actually, it doesn't look bad. Check it on this end. Um, that's not bad either. I'm going to say that that's good. So at this point, I'm now just going to focus on how we are end to end. We're thin here. We're thick down here. So if you want, you can draw some lines this way. And the idea is that we're going to take this down to this level. So we don't want to touch this. I want to remove that. So I'm going to start right about here. Take a pass. Over, hanging over in the left. One down the middle. Hang over the right. I'm going to come back to about oh, a little beyond half. Take a pass. Partially hanging over the left. One down the middle. Partially hanging over the right. Come back maybe two or three inches. Do the same thing. Left, middle, right. Back a few more inches. Left, middle, right. And almost at the end. Left, middle, right. Time for some wax. If you're having to push too hard, a little bit of wax. That's all it takes. Okay, now, as I look at that, obviously it's closer, but I actually think I've got a bit of a bump in the middle based on that. And not so over here. But I'm still low on this back end. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to do that again. Draw some lines. You don't have to do this. I'm doing to help help you be able to see what we're doing. Starting right about here. Left, middle. Now you'll notice I'm taking the same amount of material off uniformly. So if we check this, it should stay the same. Obviously it's going down, but it's staying parallel to the tape. Back a couple of inches. Left, middle, right. Not quite at the end. Check it again. Okay, definitely have a bump in the middle. Doesn't seem to be as severe on this side. I'm going to put my plane on there and check and see what that tells me. Remember to keep that down and make sure there's no debris every time you put that back down. So I'm going to put my plane on the edge like this 
Well, that's surprising. I thought I'd be able to pivot it. I don't. So that's just either an optical illusion or my eyes. But that actually is nice and flat. So I'm going to go ahead, full length. Remember, each series is three passes. One down the left, always with a bit of the blade hanging over. Next one down the middle, overlapping the first. And last one down the right, always overlapping the, pa the previous pass and always with part of the blade out or hanging over on the right side. That makes, or that uh, ensures that you don't leave a little strip somewhere that's gonna, that didn't get cut, that's gonna leave your plane tipped. Okay. Now I just have some heavy planing to do at this point to get down to that tape or at least get really close to it. Okay. Now I'm looking at this a little closer and thinking that this line where the amount of material left above the line looks thinner over here than it does over here. It's definitely, I should be able to read that on the end. Maybe I can if I look really closely. So what I'm gonna do to try to catch that up is make a pass on the left, make another pass on the left, step over to the middle, back to the left, middle, I'm going to do it one more time. Left, middle, right. Now, just for fun, I'm going to use my plane on its edge. And if I do that, it looks really good. There's no light. It's awful easy to take off one corner. And then you've got to take everything down to catch that low corner. So just every once in a while, hold your plane on its edge like that. Look underneath and you should see nice and flat side to side. Sure, there's no debris. Okay, I can I can take another four or five series of passes before I'm gonna take that tape off. You get into a rhythm. Really important that you get your plane started accurately. What I mean is this. You're pushing, your blade engages, all of a sudden there's resistance that wasn't there. You push a little bit harder, sometimes it throws things off and it has a tendency to jump, which usually means you're leaving a section right here untouched and you start planing in here somewhere and now you introduce a taper. So you really have to be conscious of this hand flat, straight down, this hand just supporting the weight of the plane. Tighten everything up as the blade engages, and then go. When you're here, you're pushing down with both hands about at a 45, and when you're here, you start to back off on the front, bear down on the back, so that your plane doesn't nosedive off the end. I wasn't counting, I think this is maybe the third series. Easier to take off than put it on, so let's stop and check. Okay, now, glad I stopped when I did. We're really close to the line. Really close to the line, you can see that. Out here. But if you look, that, this side looks, this side looks really good. In fact, if you look at that closely, that's what I would call parallel to the line. And that, this side, I would be ready to take the tape off. But if we look at this side, look how much mater more material we have back here. So I'm really out quite severely. Gotta correct that while I still have time. So we need to take section right about here.
Now if you do this where you're only going part way, you always have to make sure that you lift the plane off while you're still moving forward. And that'll leave a nice transition free surface. In other words, you end up leaving what I call a skin tag. Then you got to sit there and pick it all off so it doesn't interfere with your plane. A little bit more. I'm going to take a quick check. Oddly enough, we're still high in this outside edge, so I'll favor it for a few passes. Check again. Okay. Take a close look. Better. But we are still closer on this side than we are on this side. Not by much. In fact, close enough that I'm going to retract the blade now. So we're not taking as heavy of a shaving. And this is also at a stage where I'd say, yeah, it might be worth it to stop, resharpen. That way, as I get really close to the final thickness, I can, uh, I can have a perfect finish on the board. Okay. Now we're ready to take that tape off. By the way, this was the easy part. The hard part is going to go in, having to go in and be able to read that thin marking gauge line. Some woods it's easy to see, but with oak being as coarse a grain as it is, now you can pick it up there but you almost have to get the light just right in order to see it. I think I'm going to take, I'm going to take uh, 32 seconds and sharpen this blade so I can get that perfect finish. So give me just a half a minute and I'll be right back. Okay, new blade. That, I got to do the same thing I did before and verify that the blade is actually in and it's parallel to the sole. So with it fully retracted, I'll start planing and watch to see where that first bit of shaving comes out. Seems to be across the width, maybe just a little heavy on the left. Remember, take this surface down uniformly. You gotta love it when stuff like that comes out. That's what makes us so, so fun. And I know a thickness plane are gonna do it a lot faster, but noisy, dusty. Okay, now I've gotta look really close. Probably need to put my headgear on to see this. Okay, I can see my line with the help of these magnifiers. And it looks really good everywhere but over here. So I got to fix that. And I'm not sure what's going on, but it seems to be a problem area. It does show it being high. So we'll take By the way, if in the process of planing you get that that little uh, jump here, sometimes you end up with three or four bumps. If you continue to attack it the same way, your plane just wants to follow them. So sometimes you have to change if you're if you got them on a skew, try skewing the other way, try going on straight, and just consciously power your way through it to try to cut those out. Other words, they just, they continue. You can't shake them. 
Okay, I'm gonna take this out again, look close. Okay, as best I can tell, I've got the same amount of material yet to be removed all the way around. Uh, just as I say that, I'm about to also say, maybe it's just a little bit heavy on this side by one pass. Okay, two. Now I want to feel, make sure there aren't any plane tracks. If you have plane tracks, which are obvious ridges where one pass overlapped another, two things. Number one, you didn't feather the edges of your blade when you were finishing on your final stage of sharpening. Or number two, your blade is not parallel to the sole, which is almost always the case. And when you really start to get close, you want to pull your blade in, so you're taking a much lighter pass, and that will make that, um, that, uh, that'll make those little feathers on the outside corners of your blade do their job even better. What a difference a good sharpening does. And if you're wondering why I throw the blade out of the shaving out at the end of each stroke, it's because I don't like picking it up and setting it back down. I just want to pull it right back. And if you don't take it out, sometimes the shaving will get pulled underneath and then you got to turn the plane over and scrape the wood off. Easier to just flick that out at the end. Okay. We're on the line down here. We still have, we still have gauge line. I'm gonna have to mark this. I'm gonna put a line everywhere we have gauge line. Stops there. We don't have any on this end at all. And what I mean by gauge line, I can still see the gauge mark. That means there's wood on top, which is waste that has to go. I can see it. Here, I'm going to put a double line here because I still have, I still have noticeably more material here. In fact, all the way down. And then out here, we're really close. Really close. Check for debris, make sure there's nothing stuck in the bottom. So we'll focus on this. You see how fast that marker disappears? Let's do a quick check this way. Still looks pretty good. Okay. Left middle, left middle right. Another pass there. Purposely didn't go all the way down. Check this again. On woods like maple, pine, poplar, you'll actually come off with a little feather of wood. The oak, like I said, it's so coarse, it doesn't quite work nearly as well. You can see a little bit of it right there. So that's just the, that's the little feather of wood caused, created with the bevel side of the cutter. And you can sometimes use that as a means of determining where you are in terms of being right on the line. Yeah, yeah, so there's a little bit there. I'm still heavy. I'm still heavy on this edge. feel it you might be able to hear it 
Okay. I'm gonna do two passes here, one and one, and then I think I'll call it good. Now I'm gonna pull my I'm gonna pull my blade in and go for that final pass where we're just getting rid of any trace of a plane track. Little adjustments to my Okay, I run my hand, there's a little one right there. Need a little more blade. Now I'm being fussy, but if this, uh, the more accurate you are with the planing, the more accurate you'll be with the rest of the project. It's just a sum of the parts. Not taking much. Okay, one last visual. Okay, I can't fake it. We still have, we still have a bit of line left over here. How much? No. I don't know, but enough to bother me. So I'm going to try. Still pulling it up. One last shot of wax. Okay. Now, you don't have to do this, but I'm gonna try something. I'm gonna see how close we came. I'm gonna check in six places. Here, 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 and there. And we'll just see how far out we got. And we need to write them down. So we'll go in about an inch in both directions, move it around a little bit so we can try to get a really good reading. So seven, four, eight, five. Seven, four, eight, five. That's carrying it out just a bit much. Now I'll check on this side, same spot, about in, in an inch, in an inch. I'm wiggling around a little bit. Seven, four, nine, six. Seven, four, nine, six. So Jake the cameraman told me that I didn't read this right, so I redid it and it came out to 754. And I got rid of the last number, that was a bit ridiculous. So we're looking at thousandths of an inch. If you take the highest number and the lowest number, you end up with a difference of 0 .007007. And a sheet, of, a sheet of writing paper is four thousandths of an inch. So with hand tools and just reading it by eye, maybe with cheaters, you're able to get within less than two thicknesses, two sheets of paper in thickness from one end to the other on a piece of wood that measures, what is that, six inches? Five inches wide by 22 inches long. And the real beauty of that, 
Uh, mine's got black marks all over it. But the real beauty of that is it is a finished surface, ready to apply a finish. If you use power tools, and I'm not saying you shouldn't, but if you use power tools, you then have to get rid of all those mill marks before you can actually say this is ready to put a finish on. Hand tools only. If you enjoy my method of work and like my style of teaching, click on any one of these videos to help take your woodworking to the next level. Now I've always said, better tools make the job so much easier. If you click on the icon with the plane and the chisel, it'll take you to our website, introduce you to all of our tools that we actually manufacture right here, as well as our workshops, both in person and online. Good luck.